Hi. I am showing you my face for the first time. I know I said I wasn't going to. But I wanted to make a very special video. Because as of today, well, as of Japan, March 28th, today is officially the Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary. And I have just been floored, like, all day today. Yes, you're going to see this. This is literally going to exist out tomorrow. But today has just been wild because I've just been, like, in a reflection, emotional, <laughs> kind of happy excitement in every sense of the word of how much Kingdom Hearts means to me. Oh, that's loud. Yes, I'm playing Gaily Blood. But, um, I just, I want to talk about Kingdom Hearts from my first, like, how I am about it, how I feel about it, what it does to me, how it's impacted my life, and I guess you could say it's impacted me gaming-wise as well. Um, first things off with, I was a child. I'm not gonna math it, because mathing is hard. <laughs> but, I was a child when Kingdom Hearts 1 first came out. And my brothers, actually, they had it uh, when it released. Um, and I used to go into their the room. And I would watch them. It was either the beginning or the end of Kingdom Hearts 1. I can't remember which. But I watched them play it. And I was always curious about this boy named Sora. Just, like, going around Disney World. With his little giant keyblade, and I'm like, wait, what? What is, like, as a kid, I'm like, what? Disney? First of all, I was somewhat of a Disney kid. Not a lot, but I was a little bit of a Disney kid. So, like, Alice and Tarzan, for instance. Even in, uh, Atlantica, I was like, I was like, holy heck, I want to play this. I want to play it. But since I, it wasn't really my console, I didn't really get to play play like I wanted. Granted, they did let me like hold the controller and play a sword for like a little bit, but like I never truly got to um I never really got to play it play it myself until I got a little bit older and I got to fully play Kingdom Hearts one and it was it's a magical game. That first game is everything to me. See Sora and his friends just go through these Disney worlds trying to find Riku, trying to find Kairi, and then it goes to a bigger plot than it is. Help you take advantage of today's low oh my god. Today's money? Rocket King. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're gonna. No. Um. Uh, just. It. It hits home. It hits very much home for me. I, I just, I don't know how to frame it. I just really enjoyed playing through that game. And then the ending just, it hits me hard. Because the line of Sora saying, remember, uh, God, words. Like, promising that, like, he's always with her. And that... He'll come back to her, he promises, and like, she's like, I know you will, and then simply immediately hits. And oh my god, I started crying, and just, it's so good, like, Sora is the character that I really admired growing up. There's a lot of characters I admired growing up, but I essentially just, I love Sora's life, I love what he how he is to his friends, his loyalty, his determination to see anyone that has light in him, even if they have a little bit of darkness in them, is amazing. Like, I have not, like, I wish I was Sora. Even as a kid, I still wish I was, I grew up like Sora. So, it was, Sora and Kingdom Hearts 1 are just great. But, later, down in life, 
I actually got to get. Actually, I can show you. I can show you guys. Because I have it. I got these collections when I got my PS4. And it was a couple years back. And let me tell you, I did know about cutscenes about certain games. But I never fully played played them. So I got to finally experience the 1.5, 2.5, which was the Kingdom Hearts 1, Rechain of Memories, uh, uh, Birth by Sleep. The 365 Days movie, the, uh, the recorded movie. And then, let me just say, because I actually, I never played Rechain until two years ago. Like, I've seen, like I said, I've seen cutscenes of Rechain, but I've never fully played it. But two years ago, on my channel, I decided I wanted to marathon the games. And... I'm not gonna lie, it was really hard to play it at first, because I, you, you have to think about the cpu age and how many cards you have, and the slates and all that, it was tough gameplay-wise to play, because I've never played a card game. Well, I guess technically I have, because Yu-Gi-Oh, but I've only played one Yu-Gi-Oh game, so I can't really say I'm a card expert. <laughs> so. When I played Rechain, the the story, like I said, I've seen the cutscenes, but like experiencing the story for myself, it was like, okay, now I can kind of understand where Sora went to before Kingdom Hearts 2. I can understand that, because I never really played the side games like that, because I didn't have the consoles for them back then. And it was really good. I really liked the story. I think Riku's journey... In, in that game is probably my favorite like I know Sora's story is very good but I think Rechain was definitely a Riku game because the road to Dawn is one of my favorite lines from Riku like I could never not say that line when you when this is like which road will you take and Sora and Riku's like I rock the road I, I walk the road to Dawn and I'm like this kid is great. He's truly changed from Kingdom Hearts 1. And he, he's just the best. So playing through that was fun. And then I watched a 365 Days movie. And... It's... It does a lot to me. <laughs> it does a lot to me. Because Roxas was one of my favorites as a kid because of Kingdom Hearts 2. But I never really got to understand his actual, like, I felt like I didn't get enough of him in Kingdom Hearts 2. And I guess that's because I never played 365 days before 2. So, watching the movie cutscenes was emotionally destroying, to say the least. Because I got to meet, I got to know more of Roxas. I got to know more of Axel. And then I got to meet one of my favorite, 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 favorite characters of all time. And that's Sheil. And she, I identify with her a little bit. Because I, at times, used to feel like I shouldn't be here. Or like trying to find my own identity. Because like I'm all... Like, I always was supposed to be a girly girl or whatever my mom and stuff wanted me to be. And I couldn't really find my footing. I still can't find my footing in life right now. So, to try to fit in and stuff to the way she own tries to be, it was... It hit home. And, I'm, and I feel so bad that I never really got to play 365 Days as a kid. Because I felt like I would still resonate with her today. But I'm glad I got to watch the movie and... To see Roxas try to find himself and wonder, why do I have a keybait? Why me? Why do I have to be? Like, it's like, it's understandable how he feels about why, he, about how he's feeling. Because we all just knew about Sora, you know, being the keyblade wielder. 
And we find this boy named Roxas, and we know nothing about him in one, but like we know now that he's the nobody of Sora. And just I he as a character is really great too. I think all the characters are great, but like Roxas is top one it's, it's he's up there because of how he is, his personality and just how do dual wielding. <laughs> Uh, I, I, yes, I'm here for it. I need all of the Roxas dual wielding abilities, like, Sora, when will you learn that? I mean, I think he kind of, I guess, does in 3, but still, like, I need Sora to learn that, too. Um, and then, I guess, Rico Rico is a movie. It's an experience, I'll tell you that. That, actually, no, I'm skipping things, I'm sorry. Birth by Sleep is another good game that I just feel like it's so misunderstood because at a time there was a time where um there was a time I hated Tara because I felt like he was too naive in a sense in a sense and he should know when like he should know when to he basically should have known about Xehanort but also Thinking it back by it now, and what I misinterpreted was like, sure he's a little naive, but like you have this boy that just wants to be a Keyblade Master with his friends Aqua, and he's trying to prove himself, and it feels like just because he had a sense of a little bit of darkness in him, he doesn't know where it came from, and really Master Ericus didn't really guide him about it or anything. It felt like. He got the short end of the stick about teaching wise about it. Because I feel like there's Ventus who, yeah, he's sort of there, but Ericus doesn't like, he tries to keep him like, a, uh, what's the word? He tries to keep him in a little bubble. So Ventus doesn't really find out anything about himself or his past. And then there's Aqua who is highly praised, highly great amazing which she still is but like in Erica's perspective I think he he favored his students differently and yeah he may say uh, uh he treated Tara like his own son but I think because of that expectation he was so hard on him that Tara never really Tara was lost how like how is he supposed to appease his master that's like a father figure to him but also, he has this darkness in him that, like, he's going to tell the worlds, and every villain telling him, yes, darkness is good. Embrace the darkness. Do this. And he's like, no, darkness is bad. But, like, he doesn't know how to handle it. He's just going to worlds and worlds, not really knowing the magnitude that Xehanort set a path for him about that. He, he's encouraging Terra to bring out that darkness without Terra actually knowing how bad the darkness is inside him himself. And he feels that guilt. He feels it every day he's in darkness. When in Kingdom Hearts 3, he felt it. It was... It took a while to finally understand... Well, I don't actually feel he understood, but it took a while for him to understand... I, it took me a... Sorry. It took me a while to finally understand Terra as a character. And... I think, yes, he's still naive in some ways, but I think he was just misunderstood. I truly think Terra was misunderstood. Um, Aqua, I mean not Aqua, Ventus. Now, Ventus is a character that, like, there's a lot to really unpack for him, really. <laughs> because we have him in BBS, and he's just some kind of X-Blade and I don't really should be explaining all the BBS. I should say my own experience about it. But like, it's weird because now nowadays, what we know now about Ventus is far from what we like I ever thought about him as a kid. Or kid, or as I say, growing up. Because I don't remember when Birth by Sleep came out when I was older. Um But after finally playing his story, I can conclude one thing. Venetus is a jerk. <laughs> And Ventus is just a precious boy that needs to be protected. And then Aqua's just amazing in her own way. She just wants to be there for her friends. 
and care for them. She doesn't really want to step on their toes. But like, she's like, she's not trying to hurt Terra. She's not trying to hurt Benson. She's just trying to protect them in her own ways. And she ultimately makes the, the sacrifice of going into darkness. And that brought me to tears because she was just trying to do the program without accidentally knowing that Zaynor had his body. It was sad to say the least. And like I said, recoded. Recoded was a was a time. <laughs> I recently actually just watched it again on stream a couple weeks ago. And there are certain lines I'm like, Nomura, why did you guys put this in here? <laughs> but like, it's still story wise, it's very important to DDD. And now that I know things, I think it's an okay story. Is it one of my favorites? No, but it's essential to the story and plot of Kingdom Hearts. So, it was good. And then, I got this. Which was the two, uh, the Dream Drop Distance 2.8, I mean, 0 0.2, and back cover movie. Um, I didn't actually do the back cover movie until actually two years ago. So, I don't... I don't really know what to say about it. I think I could put that in on a later thought. I'll come back to back cover later. Um, but Dream Drop was a game that I hated. I really hated it. Because my files kept being stupid and every time I finished a world and then dropped to Riku or Sora, I would have to redo with that other world and that other person's place over again. And I never understood why. Finally, two years ago, after I replayed it, um, it actually worked. The drop system was not as bad. And I actually got to finish the story. But, at the time I first played it, or second time around, I guess you should say, uh, the story had so much plot impacted towards the end that I didn't really understand it. Which... Finally, now, I do. When you have so much information packed into you, you don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> you're kind of confused, and you're like, wait, what? What What? What do you mean these are Xehanorts and all that? And it was so confusing at times. But DDD now, or DDD, as I feel like DDD now, it's 100% one of the best games ever. I will say that. 100%. I love DDD. And 0 0.2, while, it, while it's short, I, I'm glad I get to see how Aqua's feeling in darkness and how she's feeling because she's been in there a very long time. A very, very long time. And I, she's still one of, she's still great. And I want her happiness in all the sense of the world. But yeah, um... After finally getting those two, after finally getting that collection, and understanding where it was, I was ecstatic to finally be on the Kingdom Hearts Street journey with a lot of people. Because I feel like I was late to the ball game. And... I, don't, I just love Kingdom Hearts. The story that we've been told for, for a very long time continues to make me happy, excited, but also sad. I can replay all these games and still feel the same emotions that I've had since I was a kid. I, the music, the story, the characters, it's all just one magical journey that if you don't want to be on, I understand. But if you end up wanting to give it a shot, I would highly suggest doing so because I don't know where I would be without Kingdom Hearts today. Like, sure, I'd have other game series, but Kingdom Hearts, essentially, is something that's so deep in my soul that I don't think I would change it any other way. I would tell, I would tell anybody about it, about it. If I'm annoying in that sense of the word, well, I'll probably be one. But I will tell you, the series is magical, and you should give it a shot, because the storytelling may be a bit weird for you, or maybe be confusing, but it's worth the risk. It's obviously wor worth it. And to have Kingdom Hearts 3 released in 2019 was 
it, it's it's one of my favorite memories honestly um because this is let me tell you a story when kingdom Hearts 3 was for pre uh pre up uh, was for a pre-order i pre-ordered that shit immediately right well i had to pre-order it twice first time we moved so it was staying with my aunt for a couple days so i had to change that order and get a new one second time moved again actually to our actual place which is the room you see now have to do it again so the third time i finally did it i did it through gamestop and gamestop kept declining the card don't know why so the second time i'm like here take this card please pre-order my deluxe edition give me it like have it ready for when it comes out the day before it came out or the day of it basically was gonna come in late and i was a little i was gonna lie i'm not gonna lie i was a little upset about it but hey everyone was playing kingdom hearts 3 that day can i really be upset that i did i don't i'm not getting my coffee right now yeah but like i just want people to play the game i want people to have fun cry if they need to when seeing it and just have a ball so what i did the night before was i watched my friend futaba play it she was a streamer uh and the song you hear now or like the opening song you hear now is what had me in tears i got to experience that not only with me but i got to experience with a bunch of friends that like i made and that was probably the best feeling of my life so to fast forward the next day i was sad but i'm cheerful that people get to play it if i have to play it a day late i will but that's not actually what happened my friends futaba and my friend bis were probably one of the nicest people i've ever met in my life and we're like you're spending you're spreading so much kingdom hearts 3 hype and joy and it actually gifted me the game and i sobbed really hard because i've been wanting to play this game forever and the trailers were hyping me up and making me emotional and all that and it was just it was such a joy so i thank them and i don't know if they'll see this but thank you again to both of you for doing so and to finally have it in my hand digitally at first because it's a digital copy was just amazing to open up that orchestrated version of Sipling Clean, I think, or is it Don't Think, or is it Face of Fear? It was one of those orchestras, I can't remember. It's already been a while since I played Kingdom Hearts 3 Base. Um, and I. I. I love Kingdom Hearts 3. The opening that they gave was such a letter to the fans of the entire journey that Sora and them have been through, through Kingdom Hearts 1 all the way up to now. And just to see it was absolutely amazing. Um... I mean, yeah, I, I don't know what to say with that opening. It was amazing. It was such a beautiful tribute. And dearly beloved doesn't help the justice because it makes you cry more when you open it for the very first time. And it's magical. It's it's one of my favorite dearly beloved orchestrated. It's hands down my favorite. Maybe if later games they change it, yeah. But right now. Kingdom Hearts 3 probably has my favorite dearly beloved. Hands down. Um. I don't, I don't think I should go into Kingdom Hearts 3 because maybe some people haven't played it yet. And maybe I can if some people have gone through it. But I will say the Keyblade Graveyard portion of Kingdom Hearts 3 is indeed one of my best moments of 3 besides the Remind DLC. The jokes, fun, 
and banter Sora, Goofy, and Donald have throughout the entire game. It's so beautiful to see their friendship evolve to where it was in the first game. And it just shows that Sora's just that boy. He's that light. I, like, Sora's just amazing in that every sense of the word. He's just that cool. I wish I was Sora. He just always cares about his friends and will sacrifice anything to do to save those friends. He's just that person. Like Rock said, it had to be him in DDD. He's just a really great character, and I want people to know that for Sora. Sora's just that character. That That's just him. <laughs> and then, the ending of 3. I, I don't know, I just... Kingdom Hearts 3 is just... It, it, Kingdom Hearts 3 is amazing. It's... Like I said, it, the opening is a letter to the fans, but I think the entire game, in general, is a big, the biggest letter to us. Because they're packed on emotions, love, fun, laughs, like anything in that game if you played it. You'll know it, that's what it feels like. If you generally have criticisms, that's totally fine. But for me, I love Kingdom Hearts 3. No one could ever change that about me. I love Kingdom Hearts 3. I do. And same goes for adding the DLC Rewind. I just... I, I love it. It added more things that I love about the game. And I wish people would, you know, like, ease up on it a bit. It's okay to have genuine criticism for the game, but like, it's not the worst game of the world. If, that, if you say that for you, then I, I can't change your mind. But I don't think it's that much should be that much of, of a hated game in the series. Heck, even all the games should not be hated. There are some games that are probably better than others in others' opinion, but I truly think all the games are great in their own unique way. Even Union Cross, because that has my favorite story of them all. Um, but yeah, that is my journey with all the Kingdom Hearts and how I feel about some of the game or all the games in a sense. I hope I explained it the best of my ability of me because I wasn't trying to spoil so much on things in case people are new and haven't really seen it. But this is my letter to, to Cage 20. And I want to say phase two, regardless of what it is, I'm excited to be on this ride. I'm 25 years old. And I don't, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know where I would be without this series. I love everything about Kingdom Hearts. And that's going to stay until I probably die. <laughs> but I hope every Kingdom Hearts fan has a blessed day today, aka tomorrow, because it's going to be out on Monday when America... March 28th happens. Um, I hope you all have a good day. Celebrate Kingdom Hearts the way you like it. I will be playing Kingdom Hearts 3 continuously. I might play it tonight, <laughs> to be honest. But I will be playing Kingdom Hearts 3 on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash you know kitty. And we could talk about your favorite memories, your your bonds that you made with your friends. Anything, anything Kingdom Hearts celebration wise. We, it, it is our year. We got the event April 10th. We're, we're, we're in it. Regardless of if we even get a game teaser or if we get merch teaser, it's fine. We still thrive, okay? We got so much content 2020 and 20, throughout 2019 to 2021 a little bit. So, we got stuff. I think we got more stuff coming, but that's just me as a fan being trying to not to overuse my hype. But thank you all for even if you like watch five minutes of this video to just I thank you. This is just me expressing how much I love I love Kingdom Hearts, my thoughts, my character, I guess reviews, and I'll see y'all in whatever next video. Or I hope I get to meet you guys in the Twitch chat or in the Twitch uh, Kingdom Hearts directory. I love meeting new Kingdom Hearts fans. 
I do. I may be shy and socially awkward, but like, I love Kingdom Hearts. If you say hi to me, I will say hi to you back. <laughs> but, yeah. And with that, I should go head out and get ready to, you know, play Kingdom Hearts myself. Because to technically today in Japan, it's still the 28th. So I'm going to enjoy Kingdom Hearts to my fullest. And, yeah. I'll see y'all soon. Have a good day, and may your heart be your guiding key. Bye.